Hello and welcome to Reykjavik Greipan's newscast. My name is Valur Grættisson. I'm an editor-in-chief in at Reykjavik Greipan, of course. Uh, we're here in Mosfellsbæ. It's a very nice town just out of Reykjavik. It just uh, takes you like 20 minutes to drive here from, from downtown Reykjavik. And you can see perhaps the waterfall over there. This waterfall is called Varmárfoss, I think. At least this is Varmárdalur. Uh, could be wrong, but it's like the warm valley. And it is indeed very warm, so... But not today, of course. <laughs> uh, before we start, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our YouTube membership. Uh, this has been going very well. I'm quite uh, glad and impressed that you are actually in, uh, investing into these ideas. Uh, we are trying our best. We are now we are going to uh, do more supernatural Iceland and uh, not to make it, to, not to build a hype or, or, or make it too hopeful. But we are going to Snæfellsnes to to uh, hunt for aliens, actually, which is UFOs in Iceland is a thing. Right, and we have a pretty amazing story about it, but that will be later on. Uh, uh, yeah, first, of course, enjoy, of course, the elves and all of these videos. You can uh, get them uh, sooner if you are in the, in the YouTube membership, but don't worry if you're not. Uh, you will, of course, be able to uh, see them uh, when we premiere them uh, a month later, I think. So, uh, check out the YouTube membership, it will be very appreciated, uh, and uh, on, on with the news though, right? Are you good? <clears throat> so, we have to start with COVID. Um, it's always COVID. I mean, it's going up and flaring up literally everywhere. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not very good in Iceland. We have a state of emergency right now. I mean, uh, it sounds bad, but it's, it's really just a technical thing. Uh, it means that we are uh, like these responsive uh, bodies of the government uh, are allowed to talk together and so on. It's, it's very, pretty similar to other countries. Uh, but also the situation has been quite serious, but we got really good news today though. Uh, first of all, we are getting like around 1,000 cases every day. Omicron is obviously taking over. Delta is still around, but not as much as it used to be. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, our concerns are more or less about the hospital. Uh, and it's always about protecting the hospital, not the, so it won't overflood. We saw this, of course, at the beginning of the pandemic in New York, for example, uh, and we were very stressed that it could happen in Iceland also. Therefore, we, of course, went into this very... Uh, I mean, there were harsh restrictions, but uh, when you look at it, uh, the, the restrictions in, in Iceland were not as harsh as in, in many other countries, though. Uh, mostly because we're lucky enough just to be few. Uh, the thing is, though, that today we got the news that there are fewer people at the hospital. Uh, we only have three now uh, in, in ventilators, in critical care, uh, but we used to have seven. Uh, also, there are fewer people just at the hospital, at, at the hospital in general. Uh, and the thing is, we, we do projections, like what's the best case scenario and what's the worst case scenario? Uh, the best case scenario is actually now uh, we are doing better than that. Uh, and this means that uh, although we have a record numbers when it comes to COVID, uh, fewer and fewer people are getting into the hospital and fewer are getting seriously sick. That said, of course, we have uh, around, uh, only this year, in this wave, fourth wave as you call it, uh, around, I think, four people rather than five have died, uh, which is, of course, in Iceland, a uh, pretty heavy death toll. Uh, so it's, it's, of course, it's, it's that serious. Uh, that said, we are actually vaccinating everyone. 91% uh, of the nation is vaccinated. Uh, and uh, we are now vaccinating the youngest ones, like children in kindergarten. But it's not going very well. Uh, the reason for that is perhaps because, uh, well, I mean, the thing is, they're just not showing up. Uh, and the reason could be two things. 
the first reason could literally just basically be that uh, there are so many in quarantine uh, or in isolation because of COVID, and especially the kids in kindergarten or connected to the kindergarten, uh, and therefore uh, they can't go and get the shot. Uh, and also, uh, the other possibility is that perhaps parents are not that eager to vaccinate the children. Come, Polly, come on. Really? <sighs> so, <laughs> I have to show you. Uh, but that said, of course, we have been vaccinating children between uh, 6 uh, up to 12, and this has been going quite well. Yeah, no? Good. Yeah, she's not always a genius, Polly, although she is uh, remarkably smart, in my opinion. <laughs> well, let's stay off the horse paths here. A lot of, a lot of horses, by the way, in this town. Uh, this is it's the same, actually, in Kopovogers and Hapnafjord, these uh, towns around Reykjavik. So... Uh, <clears throat> Because of this situation, of course, we have also uh, new restrictions. Uh, and these restrictions are quite tough. They're actually the toughest one that we have had for the longest time, if not from the beginning. Uh, we have a gathering ban to up to 10 people, uh, and all the restaurants as well as the bars are closed. So if you come into Iceland as a tourist, for example, uh, you basically have to go to a government-run uh, liquor store. <laughs> which is always only open between like 11 and, and 6 o'clock uh, at weekdays. Uh, but you can't go to the bars, you can't go to the restaurants. Uh, not sure about the coffee houses. Uh, but yeah, I think coffee houses are actually open. But this is just uh, very harsh restrictions. We also have, uh, like if you go into the swimming pools, uh, they have 50% capacity, uh, they can take 50% of what they can take in, in normal times. Uh, it's the same with gyms, but the schools are still operating. And this has been very uh, controversial in Iceland uh, for a few reasons. First of all, uh, it's not uh, the, the, the unvaccinated that are keeping up the pandemic. It's more or less the children. Uh, the children are getting the virus like never before. And this Omicron is obviously, it's getting easier, like, uh, like teenagers get this at least much easier than others, other children in other times or other variations. And the thing about teenagers, they are like, their natural state is just being drunk or something. They have no responsibilities. Uh, their, their sense for responsibility is, is very low. I mean, we all know this, we have all been teenagers, uh, and therefore these kids are not uh, very uh, aware of, of the dangers here. Uh, also, when you're 15 years old, or 13 or 14, you feel kind of like you, you can't die. I mean, it, it, you know that, of course, also. So uh, these kids are, uh, they are giving each other the virus. Uh, I have, like, not me, but my kids have been in quarantine. Uh, and all of his friends, many of them have actually gotten the virus. So it's, but thankfully, uh, like always with these kids, they are never getting seriously sick. And from the beginning of the pandemic, we only have had, uh, yeah, whoa. we only have had two children that were seriously sick. One under 12 and the other under, uh, was between 12 and 16. So uh, we are very lucky when it comes to this. Uh, this pandemic would obviously be very different if children were also dying from this, especially in Iceland. Uh, we prioritize a lot like when it comes to children, uh, and you can often, feel, like expats often feel this very soon, that, and they often joke that the children actually rule Iceland, not, not the grown-ups, and this is true for many, in many reasons, in many ways. Uh, and then to this beautiful town, Mosulspær. <clears throat> we're here because there was a really odd mini scandal that happened. It's not a big scandal, but it's, uh, it's, it's humorous in some ways. Uh, the thing is that we have a very popular show in Iceland uh, that we call Gettu Betur or, or Guess Better. It's a quiz show. Uh, and the, the format of it is that all colleges in Iceland, they send teams 
uh, into this competition. It starts in the radio at the roof, our national broadcast, and then it progressed in like the last eight teams, they compete in TV. And this is one of the most popular TV shows in Iceland, actually. I've been for years. Uh, also, like these kids, often 16, 7, 18, 17, 18, or 19, or 20 years old, uh, they often become like mini celebs even, if they do well. One of these uh, com co like people that competed in, in the in Gettu Betur was, for example, Katrin Jakobsdóttir, our prime minister. And you often notice like the, the excellent minds first there. So it's a, it's a really nice uh, TV. Uh, it's very like, uh, it's inspiring in many ways also. Like, reminds you how smart actually the, these kids can be. And they often are incredibly smart. Uh, the thing is though, uh, this team for the college in Moselsberg, this, this town here, uh, they had this team uh, and uh, they went to, like for the, the competition which was in, in, uh, in, the, in the radio uh, and they lost. Uh, they were literally humiliated. Uh, uh, this would of course not be news, but the thing is one of the team members revealed afterwards that he wasn't actually in the school. He wasn't a student in the, in the school he was competing for, but another school called Kvenna School. Uh, so he was actually an infiltrated somehow the, the team uh, and he competed for them. Uh, but, well, luckily he actually lost because if they would have won, uh, they, the, the situation would have been very different. Now, he has been interviewed in media, this kid, uh, and he has said like, well, I just thought this was funny, like to infiltrate it. Uh, he saw the opportunity and it just showed up and he was in the team for some reason. Uh, his teammates, they weren't sure who he was, but these schools are often quite big. So he just lied to them and said like, well, you know, I'm, I'm in like in this, this class there. Uh, and they were like, ah, oh, okay. And then we really think more of it. So uh, Roof, like the people that are actually uh, responsible for the competition, they were quite pissed as well as the principal of the school. Uh, and in interviews, they said, well, this seems to be have a, be in, have a, this seems to have be a prank. But this prank was serious uh, and they, they are not laughing, <laughs> if you could put it like that. So uh, it doesn't seem like there are any consequences for this kid, uh, but I'm guessing that he, the principal in his own school, uh, talked to him and perhaps reminded him that this is not some laughing matter. Many take this seriously. And he actually claims that he studied a lot before the, the competition and he wanted to win. Uh, but I mean, yeah, they were humiliating. So humiliated literally in this defeat uh, and they made it even worse afterwards when this was the situation. So, I don't know, I hope this young man will do better in the future, but he, he has humor, weird humor, and some, sometimes it's like that, so, so it goes. Uh, <clears throat> and finally, uh, oh. yeah, I have there. Yeah, shockwave was actually recorded uh, at least three times in Iceland. And this is uh, connected to the, <laughs> what's the, to the eruption that was uh, close to uh, Tonka. Uh, of course, this uh, name was the Hunga Tonka Hunga Hapai. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying this correctly. Uh, a a weird, uh, weird name, I mean, but who are we to say anything? I mean, our... our uh, own eruption was called Eyjafjalla Jökull, so I mean, we're perhaps not in the strongest position to, to criticize all the volcanic names. Uh, but the thing is that it's interesting that geologists in Iceland are very interested in this. Uh, they saw this as like, uh, they, they saw these on the meters that they were like, uh, the first wave, shock wave, came only hours after the eruption in the, in the e same evening as it happened. And the second one, uh, from the other side of the planet, literally, it came uh, like in, in the morning after. And they have recorded this twice since, which is uh, quite interesting. Uh, <clears throat> the thing is that uh, uh, we, we, we don't often, at least a geologist said, that uh, Icelanders, Icelandic like scientists, they don't often record shock waves like this. Uh, the only occasions that he remembered uh, that they were uh, like recording shockwaves around the globe 
was from nuclear tests in, in the Cold War. <laughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's refreshing to actually have it uh, now like with, from a natural uh, event. Uh, also, they have been saying this, uh, this of course, uh, eruption is the, is the most explosive eruption that we have had since 1830, 1889, 1883, sorry, uh, in Indonesian waters, uh, when the Krakatau erupted, uh, and then 36,000 people, well, well over 30,000 people at least, they died in the eruption, and this is the most uh, devastating volcano we have, uh, we have recorded when it comes to, like, lost lives. Of course, there are bigger eruptions happened throughout the history, but, uh, yeah, that's uh, at least like that. Uh, also, uh, he said that when that happened, though, uh, in 1883, he said that the shockwave actually went around the world seven times, which is... Uh, now this one has gone around at least three times. Uh, I don't know, it might be more often, but uh, it's probably not going get, to get to the same, uh, same uh, numbers. Uh, also, this eruption is, well, similar in one way to an eruption in Iceland, which is the, the Grimseyjar volcano eruption, uh, which happened when uh, there, was, uh, there was an eruption close to the, to the Vestman Islands, Vestman Air, and they formed, it formed a, a new island. But right now, of course, the island, this Hanka, Tonka, or whatever these islands are called, uh, they are actually disappearing because of the volcano, but it's likely that a new like, uh, island will be formed uh, from this eruption. That's like the most natural thing. Uh, so, uh, at least geologists in Iceland, they are paying close attention to this. This is quite the, the event. Uh, we just hope that the people of Tonga are doing fine. Uh, there are not many news from there, but we know that some of these islands, uh, they, I think they have we live in a, well over 30 islands there. There are like uh, hundreds of islands actually all around this area. Uh, and uh, some of these islands are completely uh, like destroyed almost. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's very devastating and I hope everybody's doing fine. But we know that at least two have died uh, there. But, uh, and then there are some people that have died in a, in a flood wave around the world. There was a course in Peru. You perhaps saw that, and we didn't get it all the way to Iceland. We are 14,000 kilometers away, uh, so it's, it's, it's a bit... Also, it's the North Atlantic Ocean. It's, it's always just violent, so, so we wouldn't even notice, I think. So, uh, this is the, the adventure land. If you actually come into Mosensberg, this is pretty uh, impressive. Art wants me to go into this, but this is all, all wet, so uh, he can do it himself. I can perhaps go up there, right? What do you say, Polly? Are you good? How does even one get up here? <laughs> so, that's it for the newscast. Uh, I'm in Moselspire. Please visit this town if you're in, in, in the capital area. Uh, and uh, like and subscribe and remember our YouTube membership if you like this stuff. More is coming uh, and uh, trust me, this uh, both we did the elves the other day. Uh, it will be for everyone now in the end of the month. Uh, and of course uh, the UFOs are coming. Uh, at least we're going to look for them. So <laughs> until next time, uh, goodbye. Oh, this is impressive. How does one get down?